No, I already know what you're thinking. Undertale music? Is this 2012? No, but I'm stuck living in it. Anyways, K-Story is a game that originally released on December 20th, 2004 on Windows. This game doesn't hold your hand. There aren't many save points, and sometimes it feels about as hard as Russian bread. I'm here to tell you how to min-max a good speedrun time on one of the most difficult platforming sections in the game. Oh, also, this contains spoilers. I don't know what you expected if you clicked on this and didn't think there'd be spoilers. First, I will explain the setup for the run, meaning the gear that I recommend, and how to get it. Then, I'm going to give a detailed overview of the run, and occasionally pause in the middle to explain tech, and put a full sub 3 minute run at the end. Timestamps are in the description, and on screen right now. My first suggestion, before we even get started, is all the way back at this optional quest. If you decided to do this quest and return Little Man, please keep the blade. You can trade him back for the blade if you pick up the Nemesis, and this can be done at any time prior to taking the rocket up to the last cave. The blade is much better than the Nemesis, with one exception, not pertaining to this speedrun. And while the Nemesis seems good, the blade has literally one of the highest DPS outputs in the game. Case in point, at least for the speedrun, please use King's Blade, I'm begging you. <laughs> well, this might seem self-explanatory, unless you're looking for a bad time, grab every health boost. You should have 50 health before the run starts, 55 health for the end of the first segment. You should also pick up the Arms Barrier and Moonskull Star items, because you want every advantage that you can get. This one also uses the Spur rather than the Snake, or other trade variations of the Polar Star due to the overall DPS of the Spur being much higher, and given that you're able to clip the Spur's projectiles through walls, which will be explained later. Also, save the potion, please. Oh, and don't be an idiot and skip grabbing the Missile Launcher. It's funny, but it's also about as brain dead as my YouTube recommended during late night hours. Alright, time to get into the actual speedrun itself. For this part, there's not any considerable tech. I'll mention that due to the frame rate of the original game differing from the frame rate of Cave Story Plus, Boat falls slightly faster in Cave Story Plus, which will impact the time by a few seconds. Also, if you just tap the jetpack button, you'll use less fuel, which lets you go further, but at a slightly slower pace. Beyond that, make sure that you grab every energy crystal available to you, as this will save time later. This should be put in the upgraded missile launcher that you grabbed earlier, right? This next section is my favorite, because it's pure RNG. I never took the time to learn jetpack tech, so on the bright side, you don't have to learn the tech either, because I can't be bothered to learn how to do it. But uh, you'd be effectively saving several seconds for you to learn it. The idea is unequipping the jetpack mid-boost, which keeps your momentum mid-air, but the risk of doing this involves getting hit with the RNG blocks of sadness. Point being, as they say in Polish, my moj sterk, my moj malpa. Which means not my circus, not my monkey. Just try to get through this section while taking as little damage as possible. Speed through this first part while switching to your missile launcher to collect the energy crystals and smash the elites as fast as possible while minimizing damage. Then we get to the interesting part, be able to damage boost through this after you kill the Mesa. I generally advise taking damage on the Archer Butte slightly above him because you take less damage overall. However, it doesn't always work out and it's not the most critical part of the run. This next part takes a bit of practice, but the idea is to jetpack boost into the lower part of the Delete to clip the Spurs projectile through the Delete and hit two of them at once. You only have to do this twice and once you get used to it, it's actually pretty consistent. Although that said, I failed one of my first runs. Now, while the second pair of deletes is detonating, smash the breakable block on the ceiling to grab the missile launcher upgrade. Alright, now pause. From here, you have two options. If your missile launcher is level 3 or close to level 3, I recommend proceeding. If not, you can take one extra damage boost here and grab some of the energy crystals to level up your missile launcher, which will save time. Also, it's about at this point that I recommend using the health potion, although later works as well. Just try to save it as long as you're able to. Hold up and spam max. I don't think this requires further instruction. Oh, but there is a funny skip here that you can do if you damage boost using a butte and have the heavy press force you through the ground. But if you fail, you've, you know, a fun instant kill and a reset. Have fun with that.
Fast forward to the end of a bunch of dialogue, and you have the ballast fight. He becomes vulnerable when he raises his hand, however prior to that, you'd want to clip inside of him. While standing still, he deals much less damage than while he's for dashing. So spam through the first phase using King's Blade and speed over to the rightmost wall. Charge up your spur, and when he drops, be ready to unleash a max level spur into his left eye, then immediately switch to the missile launcher and spam while facing into Balos. This next section has a few different strategies, and while this might not be optimal, I save my missiles here and prioritize hitting the 8 eyes with a charged spur attack. The goal is to finish him before he reaches the top center of the screen in one cycle. Which, I mean, I rarely finish this in one cycle. However, if you beat in the other sections with enough time saved, you can afford to do this in two cycles. Damage boosting comes in the save the day yet again. As from here, you will damage boost using the ground spikes to, once again, sit inside Ballas' left eye, and then spam like your life depends on it, because it most certainly does. Now hopefully, with all of that, you have the framework for a sub 3 minute run. Maybe a new world record will be set after some brave souls inspired by the masochism of the speedrunning video. In a way, it's like CSGO knife gambling. You're able to waste tons of time and money on something fictitious, like a knife or a world record, but the dopamine hit you get at the end makes it all worth it. The full footage is linked in the description, but here's the raw footage of the speedrun with no memes.
And that is how you beat Cave Story's hardest section in under three minutes. Before you go, did my sense of humor suck? Leave it in the comments. Anyways, thanks for watching, and a huge thanks to the people that made this video possible. Have a good one, y'all.